Welcome back. So you may be asking yourself, well, how do I create a sitemap? Well, let's jump in. The first step is anatomy. Let's learn about the anatomy of a sitemap. So essentially a sitemap will consist of all these linked pages. So we have this as our page. I mean, they don't need to necessarily look like this. Like I said before, with other things, it's all about what works for you, what best represents what you're trying to get across. So right now I'm just kind of using a little card. I don't necessarily use this when I'm creating a sitemap. So this is the main card. And within the anatomy, you have a reference number. Some people like to use reference numbers. They really kind of help when you're like creating actual wireframes afterwards, you can use that same reference number. You don't necessarily need to. I know a lot of people that like to, but it's a preference. But one thing that is definitely needed is a label. So this label over here is definitely going to be needed because it'll let us understand what the page name is. That is what we really want to know. So what you want to do is you want to start with your home page always. The rows that follow afterwards are by the highest priority. So I say rows because typically people, when they build a sitemap, they're building it from the top to the bottom. You can build it from left to right. Like I said before, it's all preference. So I'm going left to right right now. So the next step of the sitemap would be like your primary, secondary and tertiary pages and so on. So right now we have a primary page. So if we were to think about our current client, we have our homepage and you could access a category on that page and that would be our primary level. And then afterwards you may be able to select a subcategory and that would be our secondary level. And it could go on and on. I wouldn't advise doing that, but you get the gist. So this is our primary and our secondary and this is ground zero. Now you could use a legend if you'd like. It's totally up to you. That's another preference. If you're sharing it with a lot of people, it may help if you have a lot of symbols in there. If you have colors, I like to use colors because it helps to signify whether like a page is public or a member only. So totally up to you. If it really helps to get through what you're trying to say with your product and your sitemap, use a legend. So there are two types of sitemaps. This is a flat sitemap. And this is better suited for smaller to medium sized products. I'm thinking maybe like 10 to 100 pages, maybe even less, to be honest. There are four or less vertical levels. You'll notice that there's only two vertical levels here. And that's probably what we'll be using when we create our sitemap. But there are four or less vertical levels and they all help enhance the discoverability of content because there are fewer levels to click through. So you want to use this for smaller products. You don't want people to be going too deep unless it's absolutely necessary. The next type of sitemap is a deep sitemap. So these are better suited for larger size sites and they help house a lot of information. So we're talking like hundreds and hundreds of pages. We're talking maybe pages for like a government website, maybe like a huge e-commerce website they can get around to five vertical levels, which is huge. I mean, we're at four here and you can imagine the amount of pages that you can get into. This ultimately makes it harder to discover content. So you'll need to think about the different ways for users to get to places like menu shortcuts. But yeah, so deep sitemaps, use them for larger products. Don't use them for a product like we're building. So why are they so valuable? Well, they help you plan for usability and it provides a full overview, which can really help teams simplify and trim unnecessary pages. But really, when you build a sitemap, you can also strategically place content where users can find it. It results in the creation of navigation, hierarchies, and categorizations of your product. You get a good understanding of your navigation, you can calculate the amount of content you need, and it gives you a good understanding of your scope. So sitemaps are incredibly useful. You may not create like a final sitemap and that shouldn't bottleneck you in terms of starting wireframes or even like sketching and user flows, but you should really start one to get a sense of what your entire navigation scheme is going to look like. Let's jump right into Figma and let's start building our own.